Hello, welcome back to the start of another weekly vlog. It is Monday evening and I have had a great day, but also I have not gotten near as much done as I thought I would today. I took today off of my full-time job to get caught up on some Plan With Lincoln stuff. I did a podcast interview, I went and got my eyebrows waxed, and I had a pretty ambitious list, but I, I felt like I mapped out how long I thought everything would take, and then everything just ended up taking a lot longer than I had thought. So I didn't get everything done that I wanted to get done today, but I still, I still got a lot done, and it was a great day. I got up at six as if I was still working. I did my morning routine, and then I did, instead of like working out like 7.30, 8 o'clock like I have been before work, I just did something productive. I edited a video. So I grabbed my laptop and I got a video edited. It just felt right. I don't know. It felt like that was where my energy was in that moment when I wasn't ready to work out. And then I worked out at like 9-ish, 9.15, and that felt good, which is funny because I was reading last night. I started reading Why We Sleep by Matthew Walker, which is on my goals for this month. If you watched my goals video that went up on Monday, I talked about that book. And one of the things that he talked about in the part that I read last night is how we actually get more awake as time goes on. So there's like, there's two cycles that impact our sleep and they, as they get further apart, that's the more awake that we are. And the peak is actually in the afternoon typically. There's actually a lot of like scientific data that like Olympic records are broken more at that time because we're at our peak performance. Anyways, which just sounds backwards because you normally think of like your afternoon slump, but he, ex he explains that too. Anyways. So I felt like, okay, I don't quite have the energy yet to work out, so, and I wasn't done with my coffee, so I was like, I'm gonna edit a video and drink my coffee, and then I worked out at like 9.15, and that, it was just perfect for my energy levels, and then I got right into all the things on my to-do list. So right now, I'm letting a video export, one's exporting, one's uploading, and I have a couple things that I jotted down that I wanted to chat with you about. The first one is my little, my planner stand that is on my desk, and I talked about this as a favorite I think it was a Q1 favorite. I got it at the very beginning of the year. So this is what I'm talking about. Now I used to have this like actually down on my desk before I got the monitor. It would just sit right here where the monitor was. And it was much more convenient when it was within arm's reach if I'm being completely honest. But unfortunately it does not fit in this like width of this shelf. So I'd have to get rid of the hatch altogether if I wanted to be able to put it back on this level. I did try putting it like right here up against the de the desk and I just didn't, I didn't like it there. The pens were kind of, I couldn't get to them very easily. Like maybe if it was switched around, if the pens were on that side, it would have worked right there, but it, it just didn't really work. So for now it's staying up here, even though I don't love it up here because I don't grab for things as often, but it is still a visual. And so what I decided to do was switch around my power sheets with my weekly planner. My weekly planner is nice and I do like to look at it when I'm setting up my day and I can grab it when I'm setting up my day, but in reality, it is much more valuable for me to see my power sheets staring at me all the time. <laughs> for me to see all the goals that I've set for the month just right there. So I, I switched it around. I, I, it is a little sad that you can't, you can't see the Moxie Life Planner because I had them in height order. It worked. It was like the Moxie Life, the power sheets, the content planner, but oh well. That is what I am trying. The other thing I wanted to show you was a package that I got from Ulta. This is from the Ulta 21 Days of Beauty sale, which was actually a long time ago, but my package took all kinds of detours. So some of it is from the 21 Days of Beauty sale, and then some of it is just some things that I needed to stock back up on. So like the first thing was cotton pads. I like these really ultra soft ones from the Ulta brand, so I got an extra set of those. And then I also got bobby pins, and I, I don't, is this what I ordered? Cause why are they like gold? I thought I ordered brown bobby pins. Also they're massive. They're like giant bobby pins. I, I'm i gonna have to check. I don't, I don't know if this is what I picked out. I mean, I'm sure Ulta didn't mess up. I, I'm sure I just ordered the wrong thing, but this is not what I thought, but I cannot find any bobby pins in my apartment. I don't know where they disappeared to. I think I took all the bobby pins I had with me to Texas and now they're missing. Okay, the rest of this is from the sale, and this is a system that I've talked about before, and I got it on sale during the 21 Days of Beauty, and I have been loving it, so I'm glad to pick up more, but I got some different things this time. So this is the Clinique ID system. So what happens is you pick a moisturizer, and they have like four or five different options, and then you pick a serum, and you stick the serum inside of the moisturizer. So for daytime, I currently am using the like matte gel, and I do like that with the vitamin C pump on the inside, but I decided to get this one that has a little bit of a tint to it 
for the daytime for days that I, maybe I have a Zoom call and I don't want to put on makeup, but I want something with a little bit of a tint. And then I got this one for imperfections that I figured I would alternate with from the vitamin C. And then for the evening, I got the exact same thing. I got the most hydrating of the moisturizers and then I got the uneven skin texture serum for the inside. I just love this system. It was also so convenient for traveling. Here, let me show you the one that I already have and I'm using. It's just so convenient to throw this in my bag. And I mean, it's big, but it's, I mean, I'm driving everywhere. I'm not flying anywhere right now. And so it's nice to have my moisturizer and my serum all in one. You can see this is about where I'm at on my day one right now. So I'm excited to alternate for days and see which one, I don't know if I like one of them better. Let's see actually what the color looks like. Okay, so I wanted to show you what the color looks like, but it's this like grayish color that I'm assuming like changes color with your skin. Oh wow. So there you can see it on my hand. It did kind of change color once it got to my skin. Like it is, you can see right there where it ends. Like it's more of a skin tone than, than the gray in the bottle. Look at that. Whoa, how does that work? Okay, I'm actually gonna put some on my face because we're going out to dinner. Okay, I know you already saw my face, but here's my face in this lighting before I put anything on. Okay, I definitely think it did something especially looking in the camera and the viewfinder it's definitely like there's definitely more color to my skin than before but in the viewfinder it looks almost orange it, it doesn't look quite that bad when i'm looking in the mirror i don't i don't know i don't know how i feel about this it doesn't look bad in the mirror and it it but it doesn't look like it did a whole lot in the mirror but in the viewfinder it actually looks like it did something but it also looks a little bit orange especially like at certain like parts of my skin I did it. I bought it. I read a ton of reviews. So first off, let me rewind. If you don't know what this is, it is a combination alarm clock, night light, sleep app, meditation, uh, sound machine, like all kinds of things. Basically what happened was, I, well, I've been seeing this particular thing for a while. Emily Lay had been talking about it. And then I really wanted a sound machine. I read somewhere that even if you don't think that you're waking up in the middle of the night because you hear sounds, you still might be unconsciously or subconsciously, one of, the, one of those two. And so I asked Instagram for recommendations for a sound machine and a lot of people recommended this product. Well, it's pretty pricey. And so I wasn't quite sure if I wanted to get it. So I read a ton of reviews and there were some negative reviews, but at the end of the day, I decided to go ahead and get it. They have a 60 day return policy. So if I, if it does not do what it says it's going to do, if I don't enjoy it for the price, then I'm gonna return it, um, but I'm gonna give it a go because sleep is important. I was talking to another friend and her husband was like, no, tell her that you have to invest in sleep. Like sleep is important. You know, a good mattress, good pillow, all those things. Like getting a good night's sleep, it impacts every other aspect of your life. So I got this and I am so excited to get it set up. So let's go ahead. It looks really pretty. It is, here's like hand for scale, I guess. It's a little bit bigger than my hand. Um, and it's got this gray, this is like the speaker piece, I guess. And then let's see what else is in here. And then it looks like it just plug it in and then it, they don't really have any instructions except to go download the app, which I actually already did and then get it linked up. So I'm gonna go set up my routine. You, basically you get to pick like what color light you want it to start with and how long you want it to start. They're calling it a reading light, which is what I'll do because I like to read before bed. And then some kind of like sleep meditation and then a sound machine noise while you stay asleep and then some kind of alarm. I think there's, I don't know if there's other options, but that's that's what I'm going for. So I'm gonna go get my phone and get this plugged in. All right, I synced it up with my phone and I connected it to the Wi-Fi. So it has the time all accurate, but it says that it's still like syncing and it says it could take a few minutes. It has a little circle going. So I'm just sitting here waiting. All right, I turned off the big light so I could mess with the light over here, but one of the things that was a lot of complaints was that they don't have a lot of like free stuff, like the meditations and the sounds and stuff, but it does come with six months of the free premium. And then after that, it's $50 for a year. So I signed up obviously for the free six months because that's how I'm gonna get the most use out of it. And then we'll see if I feel the need to continue that. I definitely need to put that March date in my Google Cal as well to make sure that I check in and make sure that I still want to pay for the premium. All right, I got it all set up. So I have it set to read for 20 minutes. So I picked this light pink light 
at full brightness and then I have this beach sound in the background which is super nice and then for wind down I picked a meditation a 10 minute meditation and I'm gonna do this orange light and then for sleep I chose soft pink noise at the full capacity it's still not super loud over the air conditioner but I thought I would start with something softer before I get to like full-blown white noise and then so that's the routine and then the wake up I did 6 a.m. I did this like chirping bird sound to wake up and then look at all these different sunrise options like who knew there were so many sunrises so I just picked one I don't know and then I did a 15 minute like duration of the sunrise so it'll start turning on at 545 and then it'll be at full brightness at 6 so I don't know we'll see I'm really excited to try this out and you can also add more wake up like options and then toggle them on and off so I could do one like you could see this one was Monday through Friday I could set one that's for Saturday and Sunday that's different different time etc and like toggle them on and off when I want them so I'm really excited it's really bright right now hold on let's turn it off so when I press it it starts the this is the reading light and the reading noise and then when I press it again, it goes to the next phase or it'll just go automatically at 20 minutes. And then same thing here, the meditation will either go for 10 minutes and then I can press it again or it'll just auto go to the being off and then the, the sound, the nighttime sound. So I'm excited to try it. Okay, I added two more things. I added what I'm calling wind down, which really means like when I'm done doing stuff like productively in the bedroom since that's where my desk is I want to turn off the main light and then let this be just like a lamp um, so I did this like light orange color um, at like 60% or something and so that is my like the first thing that I'll do just in the evening time at some point and then that one I didn't set a timer when I tap it then I'll start like this whole thing and then I decided to add like a sleep sound between the meditation and the white noise just in case the meditation doesn't like make me fall asleep I don't want to immediately like jump into the white noise I want to like and listen to a nice sound so I did for 10 minutes I did um night's tranquility which is like these like chirping like nighttime sounds like almost as if you're camping so anyways just wanted to show you the couple things I added Hello, happy Friday. It has been a few days since I checked in, but I have a long list of things to chat with you about today. I also just posted this last week's weekly vlog, which is almost an hour. I don't think this one's gonna be as long, but who knows, we will see. The first thing I'm gonna update you on, I promise this whole vlog won't be about the hatch, is an update on the hatch though. So it's been three nights since I've started using it. Two of the nights on my sleep tracking, I've talked about this before, but I use an app called Auto Sleep to track my sleep. I use an Apple Watch, and so I wear my watch to bed. I've had a lot of questions about charging it. I always make sure or try to remember to put it on the charger around eight-ish when we're just gonna be like sitting on the couch watching TV anyways, so like it can charge while I'm doing those things, and then it's charged when I go to bed. And so two of the three nights have been significantly better. Like my stats have massively improved from my averages, mostly in the deep sleep category, which is the category I was really concerned about. Now, I don't know if that is due to all of the things the hatch does, right? It could just be the sound machine part that's really helping that deep sleep. It could be the meditation before that's helped me relax, which by the way, three nights of the meditation and I'm kind of already sick of it. So I'm gonna have to change that up uh, for the next time. I, I don't know, maybe I'll give it a couple more days and I'll update it every like five days we'll see I don't even actually know if I'm gonna use it on the week weekend night so regardless I am pretty impressed so far with my sleep stats and we will continue to try it out again I am really gonna take that 60 day guarantee to heart and really make sure that it's making a difference in my sleep before I decide to keep it from for 60 days I probably will make a decision after 30 days whether I return it when we leave for Chicago or take it I'll probably take it with me if I'm still happy with it after 30 days I'll probably take it with me but I will say the biggest thing that the hatch has done for me this week is it makes me want to get to bed and it makes me want to read before bed because like that's part of the whole process is the light and the sounds and reading is like part of my routine. And so I've been reading before bed without like an, an inner battle. Normally I struggle with this inner battle of, oh, do I turn on the TV and watch an episode of something? Or if we're already watching TV, do I watch another episode of something? 
like instead of turning it off and reading, which I know I sleep better if I don't watch TV right before bed. So that could also be a big piece of why my sleep is improved is that I haven't been watching TV before bed, or if I have, I've been watching it out in the living room and then at like nine, turning it off and coming in here and doing my hatch and my reading and all those things. And so that could be improving my sleep as well. So just getting me excited to read before bed. It also has helped that I had a book that I was really into. So I talked about this in last week's weekly vlog, but I went back to the book called The Proposal and it was awesome. I mean, it's like a typical like romantic comedy type book, like a rom-com was a book. I'm sure that's a genre or whatever it's called, romance. Um, I ended up putting the other two books by that same author on hold as a library. I hope that they come up before we leave. If not, it's okay. Uh, but I'm, it was good. It was good. I, it was like a fluffy read and it got me back into it. And then I started last night. Oh, can I grab it? And then last night I started this one, which is called Primates of Park Avenue, which was recommended by Chelsea from the Financial Diet. And so far, so good. It's not blowing me away yet, but I've only read the first chapter. So that's what I started last night. So yeah, so far so good. I also uh, just was a little bit behind this week. If you watched last week's vlog, I pushed meal planning or I said I was pushing it off from Sunday to Monday. I didn't end up doing it till Wednesday. So it took me a little bit longer to get the meal prepped. I think it was because I ordered groceries later last week than I intended. So I like I knew the food would be fine. And that's like a stupid mindset to have like, oh, well, the food's not going to go bad. So I don't need to prep it right away. Like no but then there wasn't food for dinner that was prepped so i either had to cook from scratch or order in or make pizza or whatever like it was just it was like a silly mindset so anyways the food is all prepped and then we did the first meal from the week that we're doing last night and it was delicious and that reminds me oh my gosh guess what came in the mail i said i was gonna order this so you should not be surprised in the slightest I got the coiled version of the Cook Once Eat All Week cookbook. So the one that I have was from the library and my intention when I first got it was actually to make photocopies of the weeks just to try it and then return it pretty much immediately to the library, see if I liked it and then buy one of my own. And then everything shut down, including the library. And I never got around to making photocopies because then the office shut down. So I've just been trying it out of the library version and I, it's almost time to return it now that the library, libraries in New York are back open. They're not open to like go in and sit, but they're open to drop off or pick up. You can't browse or anything. You just can drop off and then pick up things on hold. So anyways, I'm going to return that one. And now I have a coiled one, which I'm really excited to have my own so I could just make some notes. Like there's just some things that we did differently, like whether it's a, a topping that I didn't buy because like three sprigs of cilantro was not worth it or whether it's like, hey, don't buy zucchini, buy frozen zucchini spirals, like things like that, that I've been doing differently and I've been wanting to like write it all down. And so I'm just, I'm just really excited to have a coiled version that I can be, make my own and add notes and sticky notes and just, I'm, I'm, it's going to get messy. Okay. It's just, it's going to get messy. So. The other thing that I got in the mail that I wanted to show you is a plum paper. It is, it's a monthly calendar, but I am really treating it as a journal. So what's interesting is this is the A5 size. So it's the same size as my daily, like the same size, but because it's so much thinner, it has so many less pages, it's got a much smaller coil. And I wish that plum paper had on their website, like a, a list that says, oh, if you use this many pages, you're going to have this size coil. Like I want to know what jumps me from this size coil to this size coil, because I really would like my next daily to have this smaller coil. And I just, I don't know if doing a six month daily is going to get me that. Um, I know somebody sent me a picture of them in my Instagram DMs and I just can't remember where that is now. And so I'm, I'm just curious. I'm really interested because I like, I like the smaller coil, but anyways, so this was the cover for September. So this cover unfortunately is not available anymore. They do like a special cover each month and it's only available for that month, but it's also 10% off. And I just loved this cover and I knew I needed a new journal to track my reading. And so I knew getting this cover it would make me excited to use it so again it's the a5 size and it's technically 
the monthly planner. So it has all the planner pages at the beginning, but I don't really need those. What I really wanted was just the monthly layouts so that I could write like when I started a book and then when I finished it, just so I know what I'm reading and how long it's taking me and I can just keep track. I mean, I tried to do all this via Goodreads and I just couldn't. I'm not, some things I'm just not good at being digital. I've, I found a few digital things that I like. Tracking my reading is not one of them. So that's what the monthly calendar is going to be is like I'm reading this so I started this and when I finished that so I got a 15 month so it goes from October of 2020 through December of 2021 and then it's just a bunch of notes pages and I want to take notes from the books that I'm reading so it's literally just like it's not as many notes pages as it would let me again I was trying to make sure that I got a smaller coil which clearly I succeeded um, so I didn't add like a billion notes pages, but I did add some. And then I added one additional section, which I'm probably truthfully gonna end up ripping this the page out because I'm not using it for to-dos. And so I don't like that it says to-dos. I might even I might even rip out the notes one as well. And then I'll put a couple bookmarks in here. I'll put a bookmark on whatever month I'm on. I'll put a bookmark at wherever I'm at in the notes. And then I'll put a bookmark back here for the list section. So I'm going to end up covering this up with washi. But what I want to use this for is to list all the books that I want to read. So I figured I could break them up into categories. So I could have like, I'll, I'll do a section for like nonfiction, but then break it up into categories and then like fiction and break it up into categories. I already have books I want to read that are broken up into categories based on my goals. But I figured this to do list kind of setup was a good system for that. And then there's just some extra pages in the back because again, it is an actual planner. It's not a notebook. So I'm really, really excited about this as much as I want to touch it. And I might, depending on what my weekend ends up turning into, I have plans tomorrow only until about two-ish. And so I don't know what I'm going to do after that. So I might end up doing it this weekend or I'm also going to go ahead and jot it down on a sticky note as an idea for my November goals. Let me flip the camera around for this last part. So one of the things that I like to do is when I have things that I want to do that are related to my goals, if I don't have time to do them right now, or really I am guilty of prioritizing them now instead of the things that are actually on my list. So instead of well, Friday nights are just relax and do nothing, but instead of whatever else I was supposed to do that was on my list, if I like played with this instead, that, it defeats the purpose. So what I'm going to do instead, so I don't forget, and I know that it's somewhere in the near future, I'm going to go put it as a potential task on my power sheets for November. I keep sticky notes on my power sheets. I, I tried to color coordinate them and then I lost one of the colors. It's another story. So, but right now there's just a sticky note for monthly, weekly, and daily. And then I will jot down ideas as they come to me. So I'm going to write on my sticky notes, set up reading journal for November. That way, if I don't get around to it, or more importantly, I won't prioritize it over other things this month. I know that I get to set it up and play with it next month. Let's be honest. I'm going to start writing on it right now because I got it to start in October and it's already October, but for like the books lists in the back, those I'm going to save for November. Hello. It is Saturday morning. I don't know if I've ever vlogged in a mask, but I am waiting outside for my Lyft, not my Uber. I decided to switch to Lyft. I can't remember what I saw or where I saw it. I don't honestly don't remember. I need to look it up again. But somebody shared something that was like, oh, I I'm gonna use Lyft more, whatever. So anyways, so I'm waiting for my Lyft. I am headed to meet my friends so we can go bridesmaids shopping again. A couple vlogs ago, I went shopping with my mom and my sister and I narrowed it down to two dresses, both of which I really love. I think, truly, I think I like one dress better, like the style of dress, but then one color better. So I'm excited to see the colors back to back because last time we went shopping, we it was like three days apart when I saw the two different dresses. So I'm excited to see them like an hour apart and on two different, totally different body types um, than my mom and my sister. So I'm just excited and I'm excited to see my friends and just have some, some girl time. So I thought I would check in and say hi. Just a really gorgeous Saturday. Also, when am I gonna get used to not putting on lipstick when I'm getting ready? I think it's because most of the time that I get ready, it's, I'm not actually going anywhere. I'm just doing it to film at home. So of course I'm gonna put on lipstick, but when I'm getting ready to go out, I get ready as normal and then I put on lipstick and then I go to put my mask on and I'm like, dang it, that was just ridiculous. Cause now it's all on the inside of my mask and then it gets on my face and it's just a mess. So like, just, I don't know. <laughs> I feel like that's something it's just gonna take time to get used to. You know, masks have obviously been around now for like six months, but we just started going out in public the past, like, past couple of weeks, really. So 
still still something that I'm trying to get used to, but I have been loving matching my masks to my outfits, if I'm being honest. Um, so I have a navy dress on. I love this outfit too. I love this necklace. It is from Macy's, but it's old, so I don't know if it's still available. But anyways, I have on a navy dress and then I have a navy polka dot mask. This is the one from Old Navy. That's pretty much the only mask that I wear. I have a bunch of colors from Old Navy and we just have them in a bag by the door and I pick the one that matches the best. Good morning, it is Sunday. My hair is a little bit all over the place, but it's fine because I'm about to go get it done. I am really excited today. I mentioned this in a few places. I did a plan with me this week or for this week, so you may have seen it there. I also mentioned it on Instagram if you follow me there, but I am getting a photo shoot done today. So we have a friend actually in the city who does photos. She did Sam's headshots. She traditionally, she also is in the theater industry, and so she started out doing a lot of headshots and she is working on it expanding her book to a lot of other types of photography and so I reached out to her about a brand shoot and she is giving me a very good deal to shoot today for Playing With Lincoln. So I am excited to have some just dedicated professional photos of me and me with my planner and me with a coffee cup. You know just like you see these people on Instagram that have brands that have photos that are specifically for their brand and that are professionally done. Like photo not just photos that I either took of myself or posing for a thumbnail or just a picture of my planner. So I thought I would share with you some of the prep that I'm doing before I head out to get a blowout. So I am, I, I am, I feel like I'm okay at doing my hair. Like I feel pretty good when I do my own hair, but for whatever reason, let me know if you can relate. Whenever it is like not a big deal, my hair always, I feel like it looks fantastic. And then when it is for a big deal, like a photo shoot or filming or whatever, I am just super nitpicky and I'm like, it doesn't look good. So I figured it would be better. I had a lot of advice from a online course Facebook group that I'm in that they were like, I asked them for tips on brand photos and they were like, go get professional hair and makeup. Now I am not going to get professional makeup today for a couple of reasons. One, I could not find anywhere that would let me go to them. There was nothing, and I obviously wanted to stay within my neighborhood. There was nothing within walking distance where I could go get my makeup done in a studio. Also, I don't even know if I really wanted to go to a studio to get my makeup done. As I've said before, I'm not comfortable yet being inside of an establishment, like inside of an enclosed space without a mask with strangers. I, I'll be inside with my mask on or I will be outside because just the airflow and I'm, I'm comfortable with that. I still would like to be at least six feet from strangers outside and inside I guess but with my mask I feel if they have a mask and I have a mask I feel fine like getting my hair done but it, I would obviously not be able to wear a mask getting my makeup done um there were a couple places that would come to me and then I guess we would be you know it would just be them and they would keep their mask on but I just still I still wasn't super comfortable with it and it's pricey and I also have this fear that like I'm gonna hate it because I have never gotten my makeup professionally done. So I actually talked to a friend of mine who also has a brand, but she's also a makeup artist on the side down in Atlanta, what her thoughts were. I showed her the price and that, you know, all, this, all these people said I should get professional makeup and what were her thoughts. And she was like, you know what? I've looked at your photos and I've watched your videos and you do a great job at your own makeup. Like yeah, you're not a professional, but like you know yourself and you do a great job at your own makeup. So I would just go a little bit heavier for photos and just do it yourself for this time. Like this round, just keep it simple and do it yourself. You can go get your hair done, but then you know, do your makeup yourself. So that is what I'm doing. I'm gonna get my hair done, but then I'm gonna do my makeup myself. So let me show you on the coffee table here. I've got a bunch of props that I'm taking with me. Obviously my laptop and my phone and then my camera. And then I brought some of my favorite pens cause I'm gonna take some pictures like writing in my favorite planner. So I've got my Plum Paper Daily, my Moxie Life and my Power Sheets. Um, this I figured is just good like on the table as like extra props. I'm bringing this coffee cup, it's white with an L on it. I'm bringing a wine glass and I'm debating if I'm gonna stop and grab some wine. I would love a picture of me with a wine, like a glass of wine, um, but I also like that, that we are, that's breaking the law to just pour this on the street to take pictures. We're taking them outside at like a coffee shop. So I, I don't know, to be determined on that. Um, I'm gonna bring my five year gratitude journal and then I'm gonna bring this stack of books. I talk about reading a lot. So I would love a picture with a stack of books. And I saw a photo somewhere where what they did was they did them on this side. So you can't actually see what the books are. I did bring books that I like and I, don't, I wouldn't mind if you see this side and the colors go with my brand if you you know see this side of it but I also am totally cool with it just being this side of the books and you can't actually see it it's just white and then obviously I'm gonna bring my water cup I should probably wipe this down before we head out 
and then let me show you what I'm taking for outfits. So I mentioned this on a Lattes with Lakin, but I signed up for Rent the Runway quickly just to have outfits for this photo shoot. I wanted a couple certain colors and I wanted some certain styles. And so instead of buying clothes, I was like, I'm just going to sign up for one month of Rent the Runway with one set of clothes, which is, it was 70, maybe it's 80 after tax, which is cheaper than going to buy any new thing. So for 80 bucks, I got four pieces from Rent the Runway. So I am, this is actually inside out. I hung it up inside out. I am so freaking excited about this yellow dress that I might actually buy it and this might be my new go-to speaking dress because it's professional enough because it's like the you know shirt style speaking dress it covers my arms like it goes to my elbows and then it ties around the waist so it's super flattering it's a good length and it's a great color I wanted something yellow I wanted something that popped I try to use yellow as like an accent color if you've been to my website lately so I'm I just really wanted something yellow and I am so excited about this dress. So this is definitely the outfit I'm the most excited about. And like I said, I think Rent the Runway will let you keep stuff at a like 70% off discount, which makes this dress very reasonable. And so for someday, when speaking on stage is a thing again, I think I am gonna keep this yellow dress for that purpose. So, all right, the next outfit, I wanted a suit jacket. I wanted some photos that looked a little bit more professional. That was like, again, I wanted a suit jacket. And all of my jackets that I have are all black. And as much as black looks great, and I do love wearing black, that is not my brand. Like me in black just wouldn't go on my Instagram or my website, it just wouldn't fit. So I rented this pink suit jacket from Rent the Runway, and I also love it. I probably won't keep it, and the, well, you know what? I could keep it, but I'd have to go get it tailored because in order to get a size, I've said this before, with Rent the Runway, all you have to do is read all the reviews. If you read all the reviews and look at the photos, et cetera, you can figure out, and sometimes even researching the fabric, like looking at what the fabric is and researching how stretchy it is, you can get stuff that fits you. So I did a lot of research and in order to get a size that would fit my arms, because this is not a stretchy fabric at all, and I have slightly larger arms than my the rest of my body measurements, like if I were to go by measurements, so, the the jacket while it fits in my arms because i got that size it swallows me in my midsection and i actually do have a waist to define so what i did and thank god for jeanette for recommending this is i got one of these little like clips and i just clipped it in the back i could what what i could do is if i kept it i would go get it tailored to actually fit me that way but for photos you can't see the back so it just it looks great on with in photos. So I got, I'm gonna wear this second, is gonna be my next outfit. And again, I'm really excited just to have these two, like these two colors, the pink and the yellow. So then, of course, I rented this blue dress, which I, I do love this blue dress. I, I wore it to go wild. I've worn it in a lot of different places, but the size, I, I'm kind of in between sizes on this dress and they didn't have the bigger size. They only had the size down. And let's be real, I, I put on a few pounds with everything going on. So this one is just a little too tight around my midsection. So I don't feel comfortable wearing this dress. I, I do love this dress. And if I'd gotten the bigger size, I might have worn it. So I'm, I don't think I'm gonna wear it, but that's the other one that I rented, the third one that I rented. And then the last one that I rented, which I haven't quite decided if I'm gonna take photos in yet. So anyway, okay, let's actually go here first. So my third outfit for sure, like we're definitely doing at least three is my go-to flower dress. I was trying to avoid this dress because we just got engagement photos taken in it and like I already have professional photos in it, but it's not me by myself and I feel so comfortable in this dress. I love this dress. So I figured this will be my third outfit. It's a dress that I love and I know that I'll feel comfortable in it. This I own. It does have the Rent the Runway tag, but that's because I bought it from Rent the Runway, but this is my dress. So the fourth dress that I rented from Rent the Runway is this Draper James like holiday dress. And I thought it could be fun to get a couple snapshots in this dress just for like Vlogmas and holiday season. I don't know if we're gonna get to a fourth outfit. She said, you know, we have a set amount of time. So it kind of depends on how things are going and how long we take in the other outfits. If we'll get to this one, if not, I'm also tempted to buy this dress because it's just a great holiday dress. So that's the other reason I rented it as my fourth option so that I might just buy it and keep it. Um, but that is the plan for the super excited. I'm actually going to head out shortly. I'm going to stop at Ulta on my way to, I'm just going to dry bar to get my hair done and grab some mascara for my lower lashes. I don't typically put mascara or eyeliner on my lower lash line. I just think I 
personally on my face in person it is it just looks like a lot it just looks like a lot but i know in photos that it shows up better i know that it does so i'm gonna go buy mascara i don't have any waterproof mascara if i did i could just use something that i have so i'm gonna go buy either some waterproof or they have there's this i think it's maybelline has a mascara that's specifically for the lower lash line so it's like a little bitty baby mascara wand and so i think that's what i'm gonna pick up also i realized i did not update you from yesterday but I picked a dress it was so good it was so good just to spend time with my two friends who are bridesmaids and for them to finally meet because they're both from like about the same time in my life one is my like my college best friend we were roommates sophomore year we met on bid day at our sorority freshman year and then sophomore year we were roommates in the house and we have just stayed close ever since and then so we met my freshman year and then the other one is my friend that i met when i was an intern at new york life so we met the summer between junior and senior year of college and so they're from around the same time and i definitely told the other one about the other one like during that time in my life so it was really great for them to just meet and get to know each other too and but it was good to see both dresses and both colors in person again because when i was staring at the swatches i knew in my head i really liked one dress more than the other and then I, but I liked the other shade of red better. So I had one dress I preferred and one shade of red that I preferred. And as soon as I saw that first shade of red, which wasn't my favorite in person, I was like, done. Like that red, it looked so much better in person in a dress form on a body with things behind it than it did in a swatch. And the woman at the store was like, yeah, well, when you look at that swatch, right, it's on a white cardstock and it's only two layers of fabric. Whereas when you put an actual dress on, it's way more than two layers of fabric and it's not on a stark white cardstock. So it just did not look near as bright as it did on the, on the swatch. So as soon as I saw that in person and I saw that dress, I was like, yeah, I, there's probably likely nothing that's going to change my mind when we get to the other store we didn't cancel our appointment we still went to the other store um and they both tried on the dress and i still really like the second dress too but then all of a sudden that shade of red looked just too dark um it didn't help that the lighting in the store was not fantastic the second one was also at david's bridal and if you watched the vlog when i talked about my dress shopping experience and then again bridesmaid dress shopping with my mom and my sister i just have not had great experiences at david's bridal that's just the truth i just don't I don't know they feel very salesy it just comes across very salesy and i feel like they're not super helpful in f helping me figure out what i want like this trip yesterday was different because i walked in and i was like i need to see this style on them and i need to see any dress in this color on them and i knew exactly what we were there to do and so it was fine but the two times i've gone with like just i don't know what i'm looking for both for my dress and bridesmaid's dress the first time it was they were not helpful they were just not helpful as any of the other places I've shopped for the wedding. So I don't know. It's kind of a bummer. I, I know that it's great that they're national and so you can have people go at other like other cities and typically they have better pricing. But I will tell you the two dresses that I was deciding between one, which is like a nice brand that I was getting at like a boutique bridesmaids place and the David's bridal dress were the same price. So I wasn't even deciding between price between these two dresses. So I don't know anyways but the good news is we picked a dress and so now everybody can order it if they really want to go into the store and get measured by the like a person they can do that there is a location for everywhere that everybody lives or they can just order it they can measure themselves and order it online and do it that way but now we officially have bridesmaids dresses hey it is monday afternoon i had every intention to close out the vlog last night after you were uh, yesterday afternoon sometime yesterday and it didn't end up happening i spent way longer at the photo shoot than originally scheduled she was just incredible and like ju we just kept going and we just kept taking pictures and she was like it's totally fine and we just kept going and it was it was freaking it was awesome i cannot wait to get the pictures back and to share them with you they just all turned out so great i didn't end up putting on the christmas dress i ended up just doing the three dresses that i showed you the pink or not dresses the three outfits the pink suit jacket the yellow dress and then the flower dress and what's so funny is i obviously wanted some pictures sitting at a table like with a table and have those kinds of pictures my laptop my planner my camera my phone and like 
typical like brand photos where you're sitting at a table it just also goes with my brand and if everything that's going on wasn't happening right now I would have rented out like a co-working space or like a studio or you know that was like meant for something like that and would be nice and bright and and perfect for exactly what I needed but obviously with everything going on that's not really an option right now co-working spaces are not open like it's just not a thing so I asked a couple of friends that have businesses as well what you know what their suggestions were and somebody suggested to just use a coffee shop and to go to a cute coffee shop that has outdoor tables and nice cute tables and to sit there and let those be your tables. So for the past few weeks, I have been scoping out coffee shops in my neighborhood. The, uh, a photographer also lives in this neighborhood, so it worked out well. But I was scoping out a bunch of coffee shops and I had a, a laundry list of options. Like this one has the best table. This one has the best greenery. This one has like all these things. Well, I would scope them out during the week when I would go on walks during the week. And on a Sunday when we were finally going to actually take the photos, pretty much everyone we walked by, which we went to the first like three or four, were packed and they had a bunch of people there. And like, even if we were able to snag a table, like there just would have been a ton of people around and it would have been hard for her to get different angles and it just, it would have been super difficult. So we like kept walking and we, we hadn't quite given up on the table situation yet. And we come across these two plain white tables just sitting by themselves. And we were like, well, those are perfect. They are white. They're pretty. They're empty. There's no one around. Like, what is this in front of? It was in front of a Taco Bell. Yes, we snagged these white tables in front of a Taco Bell. So then obviously I wanted to go inside and buy something so we aren't just like sitting at Taco Bell's tables and not actually, you know, purchasing something from their establishment, but also the plan was to buy coffee to actually use in the photos. Luckily, I had brought my own coffee mug because I anticipated that even if we did find a cute coffee shop, a lot of the coffee shops right now aren't doing uh, to stay mugs. They're doing like to go cups and that's not as cute in a picture. So I want, I brought my own coffee mug anyway. So I was like, all right, I'll go into Taco Bell and I'll buy a cup of coffee. I just assumed that like other fast food establishments. I mean, truthfully, I don't really go to fast food establishments here, so I don't really know. But in my head, I was thinking like McDonald's has coffee, so Taco Bell's gonna have coffee, right? So I go in and I go up and I was like, I just like a cup of black coffee. And he like looked at me funny and, and I was like, you, do you have coffee? And he was like, no. And I was like, oh, okay, well, I can't take photos with an empty coffee cup. Like that would just look so silly. So when I was looking at the menu and I was like, hey, well, is there something here? Like, what can I do? And I ended up ordering a Coke, just a plain old Coke. I wasn't going to drink it because I don't like Coke, but I ordered a Coke and poured it into my coffee cup. And you can't even tell. You cannot tell that it is not coffee. So when you see my photos and you see the coffee cup that's full of what looks like delicious black coffee, it's not it's coke so that was the adventure of the photo shoot yesterday and i just I, I loved how they turned out and i'm just so excited and then i came home and sam was watching football and it was about to be that shift from the early games to the, the afternoon games so we decided there's a sports bar not far from our apartment that has done an incredible job of setting up tvs mounted outside their bar truthfully i'd never really been to this bar because it was like there's no windows really it's, it's very dark in there and, and it, it was like the epitome of a dive bar and I think they had their regulars and like I just never really went there but now they have all these TVs mounted on the outside of their bar and all these great outdoor tables and it was just fantastic so we got a table and we were able to watch all three of the late afternoon games and just enjoy the rest of the nice weather that was one of my focuses for this month my top priority in my power sheets was to get outside and enjoy as much of the outside as I possibly can before the weather gets cold. So I'm glad that we were able to do that yesterday and then we just came home uh, and relaxed. So that's why I didn't end up closing out the vlog yesterday, but here I am Monday afternoon closing it out today and it actually kind of works out because I will just wait until tomorrow to kick off next week's weekly vlog because I'm gonna close out the vlog today and then go spend the rest of the evening with my fiance. Today is actually our engagement anniversary. So one year ago today, October 5th, we got engaged. If you have been around for that long, thanks for, for sticking with us. Um, if you haven't, I will tell you the Reader's Digest version of the story and then I will link all the 
appropriate videos that you could go watch below. The long story short is that Sam and I were both performing in a show. He was performing and producing. I was just performing called Broadway Goes Acapella. And during the performance, after I'd already performed, thankfully, he took the mic and sang a Disney love song medley and pulled me up on stage and proposed in front of an audience of 150 people, most of which were our friends because partially, well, I thought they were there just to support us and support Sam, but they, they actually knew, they knew what was happening. And so a lot of the people in the audience knew us. And then after he proposed, they lifted the lights on the house and all eight of our parents were standing in the back of the room and I just lost it. It was, it was amazing. It was incredible. I always said the one thing I wanted in a proposal was to have family there to celebrate afterwards. That was like, that's what I wanted. So the fact that he made it happen with all eight of our parents there was just incredible. So I have both the professionally shot video, which was actually shot by the person I worked with yesterday. Katie Beth was the videographer of Broadway Goes Acapella and then therefore our proposal uh his that's who i took photos with yesterday anyway she's amazing clearly we're fans but the i have so i have the professional video that she did that is it's a lot shorter and it's just the performance and the proposal and then i have a longer vlog the weekly vlog from that week which contains footage of me from before the show just totally naive like it's show day this is so fun i'm so excited and then it also contains footage that my mom took so my mom is the freaking cutest she vlogged the the whole thing. So from the time that she got to New York on Friday afternoon to going to dinner, all eight of our parents went to dinner to meet each other on Friday night without us. And then just her and my dad and stepmom and my stepdad went to my favorite piano bar without me. And then my mom vlogged like the day of and her getting to the venue and just all of it. It was so cute. All the behind the scenes of my mom vlogging and it's great. So all of that is included. And then I also sit down and chat at the end of that vlog and talk a little bit more about my suspicions. Cause I did have some suspicions that it was gonna happen that weekend. I didn't know when or how, but I, he did, he let one thing slip that had me on my toes all week. So that was a lot more than 30 seconds, but if you haven't watched either of those videos or you wanna go check them out again, I will link them both down for you below. We're gonna watch both of them tonight. Our plan is to order some dinner and then watch the actual proposal video, watch the vlog, and then watch one or more of the Disney movies that were part of the proposal. I am gonna propose, propose pun, in, pun not intended. I'm gonna propose that we start with A Nightmare Before Christmas because that is one of my favorite movies. My very first email ever was oogieboogie at yahoo.com. And so The Nightmare Before Christmas, and it was the last song that he sung right before he knelt down. And so I feel like that's that's a good, and it's October, so I feel like that's a good one to start with. I also thought it would be fun to just watch the song, like the full song from each of the movies that he sang. So he sang like, I think it was seven different songs that were part of the medley. So we, we can't obviously watch seven Disney movies tonight and like go to bed in normal time, but we could watch like one and then go watch all the songs of the other ones or something. I don't know, or we could just like watch two and call it a night. But that is our plan for the rest of the evening. So I am gonna go ahead and close out this weekly vlog and go hang out with my fiance. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you're new here, please click that subscribe button. I upload new videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Thank you so much for watching. Happy planning. No, I don't wanna say that. I am really struggling to open this with one hand. Let me turn the brightness up, hang on. So I thought it was Jerry. Oh my God, I can't even talk. Gara for my lower lasset, laugh, lashes. The, uh, what am I trying to say? Charlie, help me.